Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you on this uh, definitely January snowing morning. I am grateful, though, that we didn't get as much snow as it seems like the forecast was um, letting us believe that we were going to get, or however that works. I don't know. <laughs> um, if you could um, please take a moment to sign the um, books that are in the pews and know that the ushers are here um, in the back of the sanctuary if you need anything. And please take a moment to look at the announcements that are in the back of the bulletin. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Please stand for the call to worship. Welcome to this sacred place house of prayer for many, and home to all who come. Welcome to this gathering place, friend and stranger, saint and sinner, and all who gather here. Come with hope or hesitation, come with joy or yearning, all who hunger, all who thirst for life in all its fullness. Please open your hymn to hymn number 356.
You may be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our failures to be what you created us to be. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from our ways, in your wasting your gifts and forgetting your love. By your loving mercy, help us to live in your light and abide in your ways. Hear the good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Know that the spirit of the risen Christ inspirits you and rejoice. Amen. Since God has made us the blessed community, the church, let us greet one another with the peace and joy of Christ. Peace and joy be with you. no marks of when to come in or anything. That's going to do it anyway, because I don't know how it works. Oh, it is. I was just going to do it twice.
Our first scripture reading today is Isaiah 43, 1 through 7, in the old, from the Old Testament, page 672, if you'd like to follow along. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overcome you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. The lesson for this Sunday, which is the first Sunday after Epiphany and in the church calendar is celebrated as the baptism of the Lord, comes from Luke chapter 3. Listen for the word of God. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. And I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary and the chaff he will burn. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Our reading for this day of worship. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The baptism of the Lord. And on this day, I have three baptism stories. The first one we'll call, Get the Baby Done. A couple called and asked if they could have their child baptized, wanted to know if the minister in that church would do non-member baptisms. When asked a little bit more about their story, it was apparent they did not belong to any church. They did not intend to belong to any church or to raise their child in the church, but they wanted their child baptized. When asked why, they were honest enough to say really it was their parents who were insisting they get the baby done, or you know, get the baby baptized. And they were hoping to find someone who would not require anything of them, something so terrible as commitment, but would still baptize their child and satisfy the grandparents so they would quit bringing it up. Fortunately, the minister had a chance to meet with the grandparents. They did want their baby baptized. There was a little bit of uh, digging about finding out why, and part of it was they thought it was kind of like a trust that you might set up for your grandchild so they could go to college if they wanted to, and they may never use it, but it would be there for them. I mean, they may never actually do this whole Christianity thing, but at least the baptism would be there. They would make sure that happened. Digging a little deeper, though, the minister discovered there was kind of an unspoken undercurrent of fear. They were part of a tradition or spoken back in some day by ancestors that babies end up in limbo and they'll be lost and you've got to get them baptized if you don't something bad might happen. 
They were a little bit afraid. Maybe their grandchild wouldn't get to go to heaven. Hmm. Second baptism story. This one happened, the, min- the father came to the minister right after worship, marched right up to the minister and said, I need to talk to you. He wasn't there to confess his sins, apparently. He was upset. So he cornered the minister after church and explained that over Christmas, their daughter had announced that she had changed her plans about studying for her CPA and that she was going to take a year to serve as a young adult volunteer in mission with the Presbyterian Church. The father was livid. She's letting this religious stuff ruin her career. Now, normally ministers tend to be calming and passive and accommodating. So boring. The minister instead confronted right back and said, well, don't blame us. You got her baptized. You dropped her off for church school, brought her to children and youth choirs, made sure she attended youth group, was involved in local ministry projects and travel camp. If you didn't want her to believe and live out the covenant sealed in her baptism, why did you bring her here? The father, with a little less wind in his sails, said... I just wanted her to go to church so she would learn good values and be a good person. I never thought she would become a Christian. (laughs) Be careful what you ask for. And today, the story of Jesus' baptism, which confuses us somewhat because so much of baptism is preached that this is a way of escaping hell. You have to have your sins washed away or you will burn forever. Obviously, Jesus, that's not an issue. He doesn't have any sins to wash away. He's already in communion with God. So why would Jesus be baptized? He doesn't need it. Because it's not about need, and it's not about fear, and it's not about eternal damnation. Jesus is baptized to identify with us, to take the step visibly to say, I'm with you. I identify with you. He casts his lot with us. Hosea said it best. It's like being married. He says to us, I am bound to you. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. Jesus is not some theatistic superpower who observes our struggles but then does not feel them. He baptized to become one with us in every possible way. Whatever happens to us happens to him. But there's more going on than just identifying with our humanity. Jesus enters our humanity to draw us into his divinity. He shows us how people created in God's image, God's daughters and sons, are our real selves, our true identity, how we are to live when we live the fullness of our lives as people created in the image of God. Immediately after he is baptized and tested in the wilderness, Jesus announces his purpose. He is about salvation. Not salvation from God's wrath, where God is eagerly waiting to hang us over the fires of hell and drop us if we don't make the right decision and have the right form of baptism. Oh, and let's go down that road for a minute. The right form of baptism. Apparently, if you were baptized as an infant in a mainline apostolic Protestant church or a Roman Catholic church or an Orthodox church, would you go to one of these non-named churches? It's not good enough. You have to have be baptized all over again. Apparently, you're not really Christian in their eyes. Oh, and it's got to be immersion. A font apparently is not good enough, which I always thought was a bit ironic. If we want to go down the road of what makes baptism better than someone else's baptism, that it needs to be immersion, you notice Jesus wasn't baptized in a wading pool or a tank. 
So let's push it all the way. If you really want to have the authentic baptism, then you've got to go all the way to the Jordan River and do it right and be a Jew to start with. What's this brinkmanship about baptism? We get to pass judgment on each other's use of water. You may not know this. There's a reason we use a font in our mainline Protestant churches and Roman churches and Orthodox churches. It's not because we're too cheap to put a tank up by the organ. I grew up Baptist. That's where I was, you know, in the tank. We do this because it reminds us of the cost of baptism. When our ancestors were being persecuted for being Christians, they didn't just wander out in the middle of the street or off to the lake and get baptized for the soldiers to see them and persecute them. It was a death sentence. So if you want to be baptized, you carried the water down into the catacombs where no one would see you. And there, with a font, people gathered around in secret. You were baptized. And that font reminds us of the martyrdom, the price paid to be a Christian in the early days. And we remember that each time we baptize. Jesus' baptism is about liberation and wholeness, freeing us from all that dehumanizes us, frees us from all that pollutes us, all that distorts us. He comes like a winnowing fork and a purifying fire to remove all the impurities and then lead us, train us, grow us into all the likeness of God that is ours to be, what God created us and calls us by name to be. Jesus becomes like the active ingredient of yeast, the spark that works in us to make it on earth and in us as it is in heaven. In his baptism, Jesus shows his humanity and our divinity. And as Jesus identifies with us in his baptism, so we in our baptism identify with Jesus and all who are baptized with him. And all together, the body of Christ, all of us working together in communion set about making life on earth as it is in heaven, full and joyful and beautiful. Baptism is a door. It opens into our heavenly home where we belong as God's daughters and sons. But it also opens out. It opens out for us as God's people to be God's love and righteousness into the farthest places of the earth, to be God's compassion and justice and light and truth. For us, not to be concerned about whether we get into heaven, but to trust that God's got a bit of heaven into us so that wherever we go, we are God's light to one another, God's beauty to one another. We are God's sons and daughters. We can trust God's love. We don't have to trick our way into God's family. We don't need a get the baby done baptism. God claims us. God sees us through the floods and fires as we read in the Isaiah text. God calls us home. But God also commands us, and maybe this is the scary part of baptism, it is a commitment We open ourselves to God to be sent. We find that instead of always getting out of the flood, God may send us into a flood to rescue others who are drowning. Instead of escaping fires of conflict, God may send us to be voices of truth and reason in times of conflict. Instead of escaping the troubles of the world, God may send us to them, saying, do what you can. See if you can bring some peace here, some wholeness, some liberation. If baptism is our adoption papers, a voice saying, you are my beloved, baptism is also our marching orders, our commission to serve. 
we are God's sons and daughters, if we sought baptism in order to get into heaven, let us live the promise of our baptism that a bit of heaven gets into us and through us into the world. Amen. knowing in the very depths of our being that we are indeed God's people, God's daughters and sons. Let us with joy, being part of the family of God, bring our tithes and offerings this day.
Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. Through your goodness, we have, these blessed, we have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered to bring your liberation and wholeness to all people. Amen. Please be seated. And let us pray together. Gracious God, you provide Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit to intercede for us. In confidence, we ask you to hear our prayers. Faithful God, you formed your church from ordinary people. Strengthen all the members of your body that we may manifest your love and justice in all we do and say. We pray especially for our sister churches in Racine and our presbytery and our partner church in Cuba. Creator of all, you entrusted the earth to human care, yet we disrupt its peace with violence and corrupt its purity with our greed. Teach us to care for creation, that coming generations may inherit lands brimming with life. Sovereign God, preserve the people of every nation from tyrants, heal them from disease, and protect them in times of upheaval and disaster. Enable people of every race and nation to accept each other as sisters and brothers, that all may know peace. God most high in Jesus, you show us true greatness, as he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life to free others. We pray for those in positions of power. Bless those who serve well and cure the rest of their vain ambitions and warring madness that they may serve with wisdom and justice. Compassionate God, Jesus gave rest to those who are weary and have heavy burdens. Heal the sick in body, mind, and spirit. Lift up the depressed. Befriend those who grieve and those who are lonely. Comfort the anxious. Stand with all victims of abuse and other crimes and heal those who hurt others. Sustain those among us who need your healing touch. Mary Ralston, Annette Anderson, Don and Nancy Tobias, Louise Shapley, Marilyn McCoy, Marlene Wilson, Larry and Ellen Cardwell, Mary Jane Johnston, Marge Henze, Heidi Lawrence, Shelley Lawrence, Dave, Mary, Kesney, Ida, Barbara, Betty, Charlie, Sean, Michelle, Jillian, and Ben. We pray for those serving in the armed forces, Mary Workman, Jay Brook, Nicholas Hansen, Evan Humphreys, Chad Lawrence, Jared Smith, Jordan Smith, and all those serving in police, fire, and emergency medical services, and all who serve the public good. Holy God, fill all people with your Holy Spirit, that we may bear each other's burdens, and so fulfill the way of Christ. Hear now the prayers which we offer in silence. And hear us as we pray, as you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.